Okay, so here's the starter soil that we're putting on top of the clay after we've tilled it. That's got a lot of wood chip in it. It's very dark. And what I like about that is that when the sunlight hits, it'll bring a lot of heat. Unlike almost any other kind of seed you're going to put in, if it was a fescue or a bluegrass, you want to put those in where it's a little cooler. The zoya actually wants it to be hotter. Matter of fact, the temperature of this soil should be 70 degrees before you put it in at a standard rate. It just should stay there. And that's hard to get up here in, in Maryland, okay? So, uh, you, you, we planted a little early and we seem to be doing a successful job up here, as you can see. Pretty windy out here in the end of May here, right after Memorial Day, okay? This is uh, peat moss, very light, okay? And we're mixing that in. And the reason we're doing that, if you look over here, where it's being raked in, okay? And the, the, we're mixing these two together, and then we're gonna put another type of uh, soil, the um, miracle Grow uh, moisture control on top, just as a small layer. And the reason we're doing that is that that's gonna make this nice and absorb it to water and hold on to it. So when we get into these really hot 90 degree days and it's really baking and we're not getting any rain, we won't dry out too fast because that's gonna kill that zoya. We gotta keep it wet for the first two weeks. After that, it actually is very drought resistant, but in the beginning, it's a very slow growing grass. So you have to uh, understand that. So in a minute, we'll put the seed down. All right, so we got one of these miracle Grows moisture controls. These are cheapest at Costco, by the way. I'm going to take one of these. Put it over here. Can you open it up. You can always see what state we're in, because it says Maryland on here, but that 20-year-old shirt there. I can well, get one. Doing this. Do you need to get one? Yeah, I guess. Old saying, I need to get one. Okay, yeah. now we're putting this on. And the miracle Grow, we'll just, we'll just put it on top after we've already raked it in like that. We're now just putting this up here, just on top as such. I ain't blanking. Now this is one of the more expensive you're going to put on this. Sounds like I'm talking about ice cream. Might as well be. <laughs> Price per square foot probably about the same. And you don't want to do this project. Obviously, if you have a big lawn, it's just not going to work out. But the point being, if you've got a big lawn and you got lots of clay, as my test kind of revealed with the Compadre Zoya, at least, very hard to grow if you just put it in hard clay. And probably part of the reason is that it's bouncing off that. When it comes up, it's just the stem. Uh, when it comes up, it's just one leaf. Uh, it doesn't develop its root system immediately, uh, so it can't hang on if a rain comes by, and it can't penetrate that clay right away. It's not quite strong enough yet. It does seem to be a grass that uh, certainly likes the tropical conditions, and with that thinking, it probably likes it when it's raining very, very heavy. It's very, very hot and it's in an area where it's not necessarily going to lock itself down in yet so it worries about getting photosynthesis or getting that one blade up then it starts sending down its roots and those roots will get very tough and the grass is very tough but getting that part started is very delicate so i'm just going to put this on like so We're putting this right on top of our mix that we just did. And, and I have to tell you, this is really heavy. So carrying it around is no easy task. If you can get help or you got some relatives that have been over in a while and they really need some hot dogs and hamburgers, you might want to work on them. Try again to come over and help you with a little bit of lawn work. Now this zoya here, I've actually got a mix. This one's uh, a compadre zoya. You can see that without going out of focus. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Okay, this is a Compadre Zoya. Okay, and it's a very small seed. So one of the key things with it, if you look here, very small. It's not large in any way. So, if you kind of take advantage of that and use these little... Little Well, they're actually called uh, Tablecraft Products. Uh, what do they call this? I don't have a name for it. Well, it's a whole all-purpose shaker. It's an all-purpose shaker. And we got these at Bed and Bath. And surprisingly enough, if you're doing a small lawn, these things, if you watch, look at this. Can you see that going on there? Look at that. That just pours right out, gives you plenty of control. It's not hard to do. A little shaking of the wrist there. And we're putting it down heavy. You see this? This is heavy seed. They say you can do, uh, you know, it's about a pound per like 2,000 feet coverage or something like that. I think that's what it is. Might mention it on here. Wow, one to two pounds for every thousand square feet, okay? So I'm probably putting it on a little heavier than that. And with good reason, you know, we've got, again, these colder temperatures up in Maryland. I've got a little harder time with germination. Um, we're trying to plant early here. It's probably gonna drop below 70 degrees on this soil, even, even in a couple days, because we're very early spring, end of May. And if you can see there, that seed is about the density I'm putting it in to get that kind of output, which is going to fill in really quick in the next couple months. And then we're going to take a roller and we're going to roll over this, and we'll show that in a minute. From Amazon, and it's just filled with water. They ship it. It's light. Put it together. It's not fun putting it together, but it's uh, fill it with water and it becomes very heavy. And as you can see, it squirts very, very small. Pushes the seed down. Okay, now we've got a Amazon roller here. We ordered online. Comes as a kit. Then you put it together, put water in it. it. Becomes quite heavy, as you can see. And then it flattens out your surface. But more importantly, for us, what it's doing is pushing that seed right down into that soil. And that's what we want, because this is very fine seed. We don't want it to blow away, and we don't want the rain to disturb it. So this is going to help keep it right there and let it sprout. And then we'll put a cover on it. Now the cover is not necessary, but if you want to use one, you can. Particular cover we're using is called a Curlex. So the next item we're going to put on, and as you can look out there, you can see it's already out there. It's this cover, and yeah, it's already put on. Now this, if you look closely, this is a Curlex cover. One side has a plastic mesh on top, and that's on the top, and it holds this nice wood which is very thin aspen wood that's been cut in the strips and it's kind of like I'll call it a curly Q fry okay and these curly cues kind of crispy and when you put them on top of there they really wedge into the dirt so they, they don't have a tendency to come off very easily but they give a little room for the plant to grow and azoya you don't really don't want to cover too much that's for sure you don't really want to put straw or things like that on it. And even this, I'll probably take up after the zoya gets started. I just don't want it to smother the grass because it is a grass that grows this way more than up. So weeds are going to go through this pretty quickly, but the zoya grass is not. 